Do a little quick test right here. Test, test. Make sure everything is on exactly as I want it to be. It's a lot of dead frame. Alright, so that has me just about just about dead center. So before you go was there something I could have said to make your heart beat better? Only I'd have known you were a storm to weather. How you doing, everybody? I have a couple quick clarifications for you right up front. This is not a diet video. This is not a weight loss video. What we're talking about today is not a diet, it's nutrition. Diet is a worthless word. We don't use it. We talk about nutrition. The other thing is we are really talking about fat loss, not weight loss. And people, people really get caught up in that terminology of, I want to lose weight. No, you don't. You want to lose fat. We want to maintain muscle mass. There's a tremendous amount of health benefits. We're not going to talk about all of them. I'm going to try to keep this as quick and basic as possible. But the other thing we're, we're not talking about is a temporary fix. Uh, this cannot be temporary. We are aiming for consistency. So with that, we're going to get right into it. So the basics of the basics out of the way. First thing we're looking at is your BMR, your basal metabolic rate. So to put this simply, if you were to wake up in bed tomorrow and simply lay in bed all day long, the BMR, your BMR is the, oh, messing with my microphone. Your BMR is the minimum amount of calories your body requires just facilitating bodily functions, keeping your heartbeat pumping, keeping your, your brain and nervous system firing, keeping your muscles from atrophying. All of those things require calories. And so the bare minimum that you need to be getting on a consistent basis is your basal metabolic rate, your BMR. And there's any number of ways you can figure that out. Google BMR. Most of the time, those calculators are going to be reliable. And if the calories you're hitting are not meeting that number, not only is your body not going to be able to function adequately, you are not going to develop the muscle mass you're looking for. You're not going to lose the fat mass you're trying to because both of those things require nutrients. Those things require energy. So once you have your basal metabolic rate, that is your minimum, nothing less than your BMR. Are you kidding me right now? Hey, the next and probably most important thing we're going to talk about is an eating schedule. So if you've ever heard of intermittent fasting, this is going to be the, the easy man's way to facilitate intermittent fasting. So if you're not familiar with it, basically, let's say you're on a 2,500 calorie a day diet. We would give you, let's say, from 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. to get all of your calories in the day. The rest of the time, once you get your calories in, you're done. Nothing else. You got all of that time to get it in. All right, you're getting hair everywhere. The problem is we're not just counting calories. Curveball number one, we are counting macros. Macronutrients are, are the, the pieces of your nutrition that actually contain calories. Those are your proteins, your carbohydrates, and your fats. Alcohol is technically also a macronutrient. Um, 
but we don't count alcohol. Uh, that is not an actual nutrient we factor into our nutrition. And I'll tell you right now, as far as your macronutrients go, protein needs to be one of the highest. Fats, next highest. And you can have your carbs either equal to or a little bit less than your fat, just kind of depending on, on your, your daily regimen. And we're going to talk about that too. So the biggest thing is when you are taking in particular macros. So first part of the day, I, I give myself from 6 o'clock a.m. until about noon or 12.30, depending on how busy my day is, to get all of my carbs in. But that is also because my activity spike is right about 1 o'clock most days. Sometimes it's 11, sometimes it's uh, usually it's about 1 o'clock. That's when I do my workouts. And so I'm, I'm a bit more active for an hour, hour and a half, depending on um you know moving the camera around doing all kinds of stuff like that so that is that is my most active point of the day and so i i want to ride into that hard with my carbs but then once i hit that that peak that pinnacle of activity i want to bring that right back down and now my carbs are all intents and purposes done for the day. So 1230, once I cut off my carbohydrates, I can still have proteins and fats and everything up until then. And, and you know, I'm, I'm working my proteins in in that time. But once it hits 1230, carbs are done. At that point, I'm pretty much all going fat and protein. Once it hits about 8, 830, I cut off my calories entirely. Why? because we're not talking about losing weight, we're talking about losing fat. So, quick physiology lesson. The way your body prefers to make energy is with ATP. ATP, easiest way to get that is either from glucose in your bloodstream due to consuming carbohydrates or pulling it from your muscle in the form of glycogen. There's a, sorry, there's a ton of in between there, but for what we're talking about, that's what you need to know. When you are burning energy, when you are, are active and using fuel, your body is either gonna burn carbs or it's gonna burn carbs in the form of glycogen that was stored in your muscle. It is not going to burn fat. Logic kind of makes us say, okay, if I don't have anything to eat and I have an empty stomach and I don't have any of this and I don't have any of this, it's going to burn this. Well, guess what? This ain't going anywhere. Once you burn through these two fuel sources, your body will stop you. It does not like to work through ketosis. That creates a ton of nasty byproducts that your body has to filter through. Ketosis is for hibernation. And so basically what we're trying to do is we're trying to get into a, a, a rhythm where we're essentially hibernating every night. So while you don't want to go to bed like hungry, hungry, like I said, I finish my calories between 8 and 8.30. And I'm trying to go to bed between 9.30 and 10 o'clock most nights. Um, and we're going to talk about sleep momentarily as well. But all things considered... You don't want to go to bed hungry, but you need to go to bed without a lot of food on your stomach. That way, while you're sleeping, your body can go into ketosis. Basically, we're looking to have your stomach hit empty pretty early in your sleep cycle. So that at that point, when your activity is as low as it can possibly be, but you're still needing to feed that machine just a little bit, your body can pull those fats from that. Sleeping is the perfect time to utilize ketosis. And I've got one other little helper right here. This guy, triple strength L-carnitine from Now Foods. There we go, that's a good shot. So what L-carnitine does, um, it, it has a, a ton of neurological benefits, but one of the main things it does is it, uh, primes your body to start metabolizing those those fatty cells for nutrients to, to start making ATP off of that. 
And so supplementing that can kind of kickstart your body. So usually I'll have a tablespoon right before I go to bed. Um, and, you know, sometimes I'll kind of wake up with that really sick flu-like feeling, just kind of roll over, hold my stomach for a little bit. Really, it feels like I'm taking an antibiotic. That's what it feels like. Just like these moments of really, really extreme nausea. But that's the thing. Your body is getting rid of waste. It doesn't feel good. It's not a nice, rewarding feeling. It is after the fact. But this is work. And it's, it's kind of constant work. And that's what makes it so much more challenging than just losing weight. We can cut your calories down and you can drop 20 pounds in a month, but it's going to be muscle and your body is going to do everything it can to put that right back on. And so that's where you get that slingshot where, oh my God, two months ago I lost 10 pounds, but then a month ago I put 15 back on. Now I'm on track to lose 25 but I'm worried I'm going to put 30 back on. Yeah, yeah, you will. Your body doesn't want to lose that muscle. So when we are losing body fat, there is a specific way to do it, and it's not an easy way. And it's exactly what I'm talking about. Keeping your carbs front-loaded at the beginning of your day to facilitate that, that high activity. And once your activity spikes, that's when we bring it back down. We don't need fuel anymore. Now we need recovery. So hopefully you can kind of ride through those carbs and that glycogen for the rest of the day so that by the time you get to bed, your, your body is essentially finishing up, utilizing what it needed to use, and now is kind of getting ready to go into that ketosis so it can burn your fat while you sleep. Speaking of sleep, sleep is an incredibly important thing to work into your routine here. Um, both because that's essentially when your body is going to be burning its fat, its fat stores, but also because that's just when your brain releases a lot of its hormones during that REM sleep. And, and so uh, without, without getting lost in the minutia of it, try to hit it's a, a solid six hours a night. I, I, I know there's a lot to try to consider here, but remember, you're basing this off of your BMR, just the BMR for right now. We're going to add more to this as, as we continue to, to kind of progress and, and once we need further information, once we need the next step to take, then we can get a little bit more into it. But this is going to be for everybody, especially right now, this last week, we didn't have any shutdowns of, biz of uh, businesses, but it's summertime and a lot of the stuff that we would ordinarily be going and doing is just not available to us. So our activity level is diminished, but I am guessing our calorie consumption is at least staying the same. So again, when you go to sleep with all of this fuel in your system, your body has to decide what to do with it. It can't just dump it. It sure can't use it. And so it's going to put it into storage and especially carbs, especially carbs, your body wants to run off of carbs. And so if you have those right before you go to sleep, it's going to fill up those muscles with glycogen. And then once it can't do that anymore, it's going right into the fat cells. And so again, there is a specific way your body metabolizes fat. It's when it is, at rest when there is no energy being exerted when there is energy it needs those sugars to get rid of the fat you have to bottom out your calories and your activity and just let your body feed on those fat cells and it's not comfortable find your BMR figure out your macros with protein being the highest fats being right in the middle and carbs either being equal to or less than your fats and make sure you're at least getting six hours of sleep a night i know that's tough for some people but make it happen this is work we're, we're working on making your body better 
You can't just fall into it. You can't just stumble into it. And if you could, you already have and you're not watching this video. You're walking around naturally at 11% body fat, which is good for you. But for the rest of us, this is what we need to be doing. If you have any questions at all, contact me on any social media. I am not opening comments on this video because I am not opening a discussion here. Uh, and, and especially uh, a discussion that could confuse information when I'm just trying to get the basics out. So if you have something uh, you want to challenge me on or talk to me about, you got any number of ways to do that. I'm going to be making regular updates to these videos. This production is garbage. I need more programs. I need just a lot of stuff. And so I'll be redoing these as time goes on. So if you have something that you want me to include in this, contact me. But the comment section, no, I'm not even messing with that. I'm not giving anybody a chance at this nonsense. I've been in too many situations where people think I'm starting a conversation. I am not. This is not a conversation. Bull stop. Facebook, Instagram, email, cell phone, toobigfitness.com, any number of those ways, you can get a hold of me. I'm trying to be as accessible as possible, but I want to keep the confusion to a minimum, so no comment section. Let me know what other information I can get. Let me know if I need to help you find your BMR or your macros. Consistency is key. This cannot be a temporary fix. Once you start doing this, you need to make your best effort to continue to do it. However I can help, I'll do what I can. But I can't do that until you get started and you let me know how I can help.